Hi, uh, this is uh, Gopal. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to new SaaS, the soft soft pass as a service webinar. I think uh, we all know uh, SaaS is like a software as a service. That's the acronym. So, but today we uh, call it as a soft pass as a service. So, I mean, uh, to quickly introduce, uh, I'm uh, Gopal. I will be the moderator for the today's uh, session uh, today. So to quickly introduce uh, myself, I work as a director with uh, financial services in uh, Deloitte, uh, based in uh, Malaysia, but uh, work uh, work and support my clients in the ASEAN region. And today I've been, uh, have three um, very uh, good gentlemen with me, uh, who you can see on the screen, uh, who Jason Negan, who is the CEO and product architect of uh, Bindo Labs. So Bindo Labs has been uh, serving thousands of uh, merchants worldwide. Uh, and with omnichannel POS and payment systems. So Jason is the uh, started uh, Bindo in New York 2011. So he will be uh, sharing his uh, perspectives later. And the second person whom we have on the webinar today is uh, Mr. Pedro. Uh, Pedro uh, is the co-founder and managing director of uh, Bill 38. So uh, he's an uh, avid uh, runner and holds a degree in physics, almost 20 years of experience in uh, telecom, mobile, cybersecurity. And then um, application security is something very close to his heart. So he will be sharing some perspectives on the security aspects. And then uh, the third person uh, we have on the webinar today is uh, uh, Mr. Angus. He's the director of uh, Mindset. Come with uh, around some uh, uh, solid years of experience in uh, payments and securities industries in Asia. So he's the founding member, member of uh, Mindset. Uh, and then uh, he will be sharing his perspectives on uh, what are the implementations, uh, implementation challenges uh, during this soft pause uh, installation. So just to uh, set the context of uh, today's uh, discussion, uh, I would like to give a perspective of what's happening with respect to payments in uh, the ASEAN market. Uh, let me quickly uh, share uh, my uh, slides. Hope uh, you can all uh, hear uh, and see my screen. So uh, I think as we all are conscious uh, of the fact that uh, payments has been uh, um, disrupting very heavily in the ASEAN uh, region, um, because of multiple reasons, the young population in the region is increasing. Many of the population are digital savvy. Uh, there is an increasing uh, people with respect to the usage of social media, internet usage, the mobile subscriptions uh, is getting high. The, the internet penetration, mobile penetration is getting increasing, which we see is a very uh, favorable sign to push uh, things in the digital uh, payments world. So we see uh, in the ASEAN market, uh, comparing many of the uh, countries like uh, the Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore, um, there is a significant rise in the digital payment user for uh, total uh, adult population. You can see some of the numbers here, um, uh, the digital payment transaction value. So which is a, a very clear sign of of how all these countries in the region are moving towards a cashless uh, uh, kind of an uh, a strategy. Uh, we also see a very significant push from all the regulators to move towards uh, accepting digital payments and how do we acquire some of this uh, uh, cash transaction and bring towards the cashless journey. That's where uh, the context of today on how do we uh, put a soft pause um, as one strategy or how you can convert, convert your mobile devices as an acquiring terminal to uh, convert into payments. So this is uh, getting very interesting in, in, in the region. So. Uh, and um, based on some of the analysis uh, Deloitte did previously, we, we see majority of the collaborations we see in the banks in the ASEAN region is mostly coming from the payments uh, kind of an area, which is uh, clearly evident, uh, the, the push that we are getting for the um, payments, both on the acquiring side and the issuance side. So, I mean, uh, this uh, phenomena has been significantly increased uh, during the uh, the latest uh, pandemic. So there was an interesting uh, sentence I was uh, reading last time, like never let a good pandemic or a bad pandemic to go waste. So maybe in the digital payments world where we are today, uh, I think uh, because of this pandemic, the, there was a significant rise in the usage of uh, digital payments. Uh, and then uh, many of the banks we see in the region and globally, they've increased their contactless payment. Many of them try to digitize the whole processes and and uh, so some of the uh, merchants, the SME and MSME, they're also moving towards uh, accepting digital payments and all. Although uh, we see there is a significant push happening, but there are some fundamental challenges, like many of the uh, merchants and the retailers, they still worry about the security challenges that are um, uh, 
um, currently uh, available and security cha challenges that are associated. And then uh, there is a constant uh, pressure on the MDR and the interchange and their uh, ever-changing uh, regulatory uh, compliance, which they have to adhere to. Uh, and then the cost of uh, the cost of owning terminals is uh, quite high. And then if someone wants to embark on this uh, new ways of uh, uh, soft cost and all, there are still some implementation challenges and all. So, I mean, today we, with that context, I, I, I would like to set the uh, stage today to, to see what, what are all the various ways we can uh, look at in developing these things. And then in uh, the format of our webinar will go like this. Uh, in the next uh, 45 minutes, we'll have the, our three uh, gentlemen. Uh, we, they will share around 15 minutes uh, kind of a time on uh, various aspects. So, so first, I would like to start with uh, Mr. Jason. Um, to give us a perspective on uh, what are the key considerations or what is the way of success in the soft pause uh, business um, in the current uh, scenario. Uh, Jason? Yes, thanks, Kapal. Um, thanks. Yeah, so um, um, so quick introduction. Uh, my name is Jason, um, and I am one of the founder of um, Window Labs. Um, so I'm gonna go over um, um, the slide and give um, you guys a quick introduction of what we do. Um, so we were started in 2010 in New York, and um, currently we have um, our Asia headquarters in Hong Kong right now. We currently have about a hundred people um, in. A, a little bit over 100 people worldwide and about 100 people here in Hong Kong and also in Shenzhen um, so supporting the entire Asian market. Um, we focus on um, not just soft pause or payment, but we also focus on the point of sale system for retail, FMB, and also hotel. Um, we have certification with um, like some of the proprietary system, like say um, operas and um, hotel system, um, um, other PMS systems so that we can easily in bring soft power solution um, and also payment solution into um, into different kind of like interesting verticals like um, and even um, um, into BOT chains and also retail chains and um, with full integration with ERP system. Yeah, so these are some of the category that we support. Um, other than restaurants and quick serve restaurant, we also support wine liquor shop, clothing stores and convenience stores and um, any pretty much like any kind of like retail shops. Um, so these are some of the major this four quadrant represent um, uh, the major product that we focus on um, POS and also order and also OMS order management system. Um, this is essentially the point of sale system for retail and also restaurants. Um, OMS is the order management system connecting um, the restaurants, for example, like to food panda, delivery, and also Uber Eats um, and Grab. Um, allowing them to receive the orders and, and get the orders into their kitchen. Mobile ordering is also one of our major focus, so, and it's growing rap rapidly um, because of COVID, so, um, allowing the customers to place an order on their mobile app or on their mobile phone. Um, and then the other one is a um, on the top right corner is, is a procurement system. This is like B2B payment. So we allow customers to be able to um, go on to a B2B platform and then to order from their suppliers, make electronic payments through credit card or through other payment methods. We also support um, a, we also have an OMI channel payment gateway. Um, we support um, uh, e-commerce, also mobile commerce um, transactions. Uh, we also support a lot of um, 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 e EMV compliance um, um, payment terminals, um, for example, like the PEX terminal, Landy terminals, like various kind of like payment terminals. Um, so this is like a high level of what we do. Um, we have the point of sale system that will live on like an, a tablet. It could be an iPad or it could be an Android. We also have kiosks. We also have a uh, table management system, um, pick up display. The, on the left-hand side is mostly some of the product that we can deliver. Um, and on the right hand side, these are the um, other system that we integrate to, for example, the uh, like um, Oracle ERP system, SAP, Salesforce, QuickBooks, Zero, Shopify, like all kinds of like different platform. Um, so this is like a, an example of our retail and also restaurant point of sale system. Um, on the left hand side, you can see all the, uh, the, the, the 
the current order on the right hand side is just a menu. We and the point of sale system is also fully integrated with a traditional terminal. And in the um, and also for the soft pause case, um, the point of sale system can also live on a tablet or on a um, Android phone, so it can um, accept payment at the same time. Um, so we also have like cash and also um, shift management, inventory management, um, multi-location. So um, essentially the, um, the chain owners, they would be able to um, oversee all their sales and also payment acceptance like across the entire chain, across like different regions and see different analy analytics. Yeah, so um, so this is like one some of our traditional product. We're coming from a background doing a lot of EMV certification for the banks, for example, like say, um, and also for telcos as well. So um, we, and these are some of the um, yeah. So this is like the only channel payment gateway that we have. On the left hand side is just the e-commerce, um, an example of like a e-commerce website. Um, in the middle, that is like a mobile app accepting like different kind of payment, including credit card, um, Alipay, WeChat Pay, and in the case of Hong Kong, it could be Autopus or like some other mobile wallet as well. On the right hand side, it would be a traditional terminals um, um, accepting like different kind of payment um, like Alipay, WeChat Pay, and also all the credit card like Visa, Mastercard, um, JCB, um, American Express, so and also Autopass. So in the case of SoftPass, we are bringing the capability to everything to a Android phone that would be a lot easier to um, for the um, shopkeepers and also the cashier to handle easier for them to be able to um, basically we are bringing the Apple store experience um, even more seamless to like all kind of like shops um, across retail and also restaurants. Um, yeah, so we have been we have been um, supporting like different like payment terminal in the past. However, the um, we have been receiving a lot of requests um, asking for more agile um, um, solutions. Um, so soft pause is a really good opportunity to come in place. We will be able to roll out soft pause to like hundreds, if not thousands of like um, clients asking for more agile solutions. Yeah, so these are some of the solutions in that we can support in Hong Kong, in Asia, um, and also in the US. Um, the other interesting thing is that we are also going to be supporting soft, um, supporting gift card and also prepaid card for soft pause as well. These are these are some of the um, projects that we are already working we are already working on, um, allowing gift card to be um, like NFC gift card to be accepted like on traditional pause, and, and now um, we will be able to bring the acceptance to even soft pause. Yeah, so this is like an example of. Um, like a soft pause solution um, in one of our Hong Kong um, customers' um, office, so they would be able to um, they would be able to either enter the amount or with the ECI integration, um, they can basically just um, uh, select the item that they want to check out or use barcode scanner to scan the item that they want to check out, and then they complete the entire transactions. So um, next, um, so currently we already have certification for a lot of our terminals um, um, for um, soft for, for for traditional pause, and we are working on um, the uh, full acceptance um, for soft pause as well, um, along with my set. Um, and then the other interesting thing that um, that you can see right now is that on the soft pause that I showed you earlier, we'll also be um, accepting, uh, allowing the um, the the um, the restaurants owners, uh, restaurants operator, cashiers um, to to place an orders um, and uh, like through the mobile app, and then they can they can basically um, um, choose every choose everything on the menu. They would be able to go through the entire checkout process and also make the payment on the same device. The soft pause will also with like full integration with our traditional pause with our inventory system. So this is one of the major differentiation from um, from any other soft pause uh, or payment terminal out there because um, it's like for without the integration, it's still a little bit like a traditional pause. But with the integration, it it substantially improved the capability of like bringing like business logics like inventory like um, CRM into the soft pause. 
yeah, so this is our team. And um, if you guys have any question later on, can ask here or feel free to um, reach out to me later on. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, uh, Jason, for sharing some of the use cases uh, you're uh, working on and uh, uh, the clients you're supporting. Uh, so thanks uh, all the participants for the good questions that are coming up. So I'd like to ask the question to the relevant uh, uh, panelist uh, today, but um, I would like to go through one round of uh, the presentations from everyone, and then I'll uh, take up the questions. But uh, please uh, feel free to uh, get more questions into the chat. So um, just moving on uh, uh, to take to the next level of the uh, webinar, I think uh, one of the key aspects, I think uh, we all see the digital payments are increasing. The innovation is on, uh, we have to manage the innovation on one hand. And at the same time, we need to be managing the, the risk uh, element on the other hand. So there is a growing uh, concern in the region and uh, globally with respect to the security challenges of uh, soft pass. So maybe I get, I get uh, uh, Mr. Pedro to uh, walk us on some of the challenges in the soft pass system and, uh, um, and to share some of his perspectives, Pedro. Thank you very, thank you very much, Upal, for the for the introduction, and thank you everyone for for joining uh, today for this um, webinar. Hope you find everything uh, that we say interesting, and uh, um, as uh, Jason and, and Gopal mentioned, happy to take your your questions at at the end. So from my side, I'm uh, Pedro Hernandez, as you can see by the background. Um, I work for Bill Thirty Eight. Um, at Bill Thirty Eight, basically, what we do, we enable um, innovative use cases uh, to be deployed that um, have a mobile application as, as one of the key uh, elements. And we, we do that focusing on the security. So we make sure that a mobile application with all the assets that go into, into that, as well as, uh, as the web service that um, uh, it is connecting to, is safe and, and secure and free from, from fraud. So particularly on, on SoftPost today, I wanted to talk to you about the, the security challenges, as, as mentioned in the, in the title. So to give it a bit more of a structure, um, I basically will cover uh, three dimensions uh, of the security challenges and the security um, points that have to be addressed. So the first one is what we call the regulatory aspects or regulatory dimension. Uh, that as you know, in soft posts, because of the um, acceptance of the contactless payments that is an industry already established, there are several, we can call them regulators or, or, or um, uh, companies that establish guidelines and, and um, requirements from the security standpoint. And here we are talking about, uh, for instance, uh, PCI as an organization. We talk about the, the schemes, the payment schemes that um, um, are basically um, um, sponsoring the, the corresponding um, uh, networks of payment. And um, that's one of the key, key elements and uh, probably the, the first one that one realizes when tries to do a launch of a soft post, right? Because you have this list of requirements that you have to meet and most of them are um, security features that have to be integrated in a solution. And that's very, very key. So I will talk about that one, but I would like as well to add these two other dimensions that you see. Uh, one of them is uh, the life cycle. And when we talk about the life cycle is not only the life cycle of the, of the user or the device, but as well the entire system and an entire service and how uh, this is um, going to be as well a, a challenge from the security perspective. And the third dimension is the, the reach because basically we, we are all here for the business. So we, we want to launch a soft post solution that is able to run on as many uh, customer phones as possible. And uh, that comes with associated challenges security standpoint that the more phones and the more devices that you want to support, the more difficult or more complex that it becomes. So let's let's get into it. So for the regulatory aspects, um, I'm going to use an analogy to, to talk about the three uh, major groups of, of um, capabilities or features that have to be implemented. So uh, here you see that we talk about protection, we talk about diversification and renewability. To use a uh, easy analogy, let's think about uh, an, uh, an apartment building that has, I don't know, 30 apartments in, in the same building. So the, the protection basically would consist on putting a lock on uh, every door of uh, this apartment building. That's something that uh, probably is, is very reasonable for, for everyone. 
And uh, with that, what we, we, we achieve is basically a, a burglar or, or someone that wants to get something from inside the apartments uh, have to overcome this, this protection, right? The, the third area is the diversification. And here uh, in this analogy would be to put a, a lock with a different key on each of these of the doors of the apartment. So you don't have one uh, key that opens all the doors, but basically you have a diversified um, a set of keys that open each of the doors. So if an attacker gains access to one of the, of the keys, can open one apartment, but if they want to open another apartment, they have to um, start from, from, from the origin to, to do the, the, the attack or the, the, the breaking in the, in the apartment. And the third one is the renewability. And again, in this analogy would be uh, changing the keys every, every month or uh, every time that a, a tenant leaves uh, to, uh, to, to install a new lock. Because with that, you make sure that if the key is compromised at some moment of time, uh, because I've been a resident in this apartment building, I cannot come back two years down the road and try to open the door with the same key and it works. So um, basically we are resetting the, the security from this perspective. So when we bring this analogy to the soft pause area or actually any kind of uh, critical um, uh, business that has a critical um, uh, application, a mobile application, we're talking about um, several sets of features that actually are covered as well in the, um, in the specifications uh, that we mentioned about PCI, about the schemes. So on the one side, from the protection side, uh, we are talking about uh, things of, uh, like routing detection, like um, emulator detection or debugging detection that prevent that someone that wants to break the, the system, wants to break the software solution, is able to do some dynamic analysis of the application. How is it working? What is the logic implemented? Which are the, um, and the, 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 the flow that is used to perform a payment and so on. Then we have some others like um, uh, pin entry protection or secure pin entry that prevent that someone is installing some malware to collect uh, the pin codes on, on corresponding to, to each of the, of the credit cards that are presented. We have as well mechanisms like anti-repackaging or anti-tampering that you cannot modify the mobile application and um, publish, for instance, a, a malicious version of the application that is doing uh, credit card numbers um, collection, for instance. So these are the, the protection area. And, and here I'm listing nine of them. Um, on the PCI or, or any of the specifications, you can see that there are many more of them. I think in our uh, solution, we have uh, 20 plus that uh, correspond to this category. And these are very critical because it's what makes, uh, increases the barrier of entry for any attacker or any fraudster in order to break the, the system. The second um, area is basically uh, the diversification. And here, what we are talking about is uh, mainly the, the, the different logs perspective. So we are using uh, personalization of, of each of the applications out there from, from each user that has different keys. That uh, means that if I'm able to break a mobile application that is installed on a mobile phone, I cannot directly use this information to um, break the mobile application that is installed in a different phone. Uh, same wise, I'm not able through these device banging capabilities, I'm not able to uh, install some malware that can collect the information that is in, in, in the phone of a specific user. I bring it to uh, my phone, uh, I send it to my phone and then I basically run the, the, same, um, and the same transactions from, from a different device. Um, these capabilities again are as well a requirement from, from the perspective of the, of the regulators and have to, be, have to be there. And the final one is um, related to um, the renewability. And, and here we are, we are talking about is basically making sure that the keys, the credentials, the tokens, everything that is necessary for performing a transaction is um, renewed and, and is not lasting forever. So that introduces as well some requirements from the perspective of managing all this information and all this uh, key material, including for instance, if you are familiar with the PCI specs, the, the attestation uh, capabilities and the attestation server, okay? So of course you can imagine that implementing all these uh, has its challenges and um, it's definitely uh, something that cannot be um, 
dawn uh, overnight and requires as well a continuous update because as you know, uh, these new features, these new capabilities and protections are necessary from, from, the, from, the, from the point of view that every, every day, uh, everyone is investing in, in, new, in new security attacks. So the, the second dimension that uh, I wanted to talk is the, the life cycle from a, from a challenge perspective. And here is, is what I already introduced uh, is if you, look, if you look at a system, a service, a mobile software service, you have to take into account that it's going to last for, for several um, um, years or at least months for sure. And uh, if you look at the, the, the rate of new vulnerabilities being found out there, you can realize that if, if two vulnerabilities, for instance, of these CVEs type of vulnerabilities are found every hour, you need a very strong uh, researcher and uh, developer team that is looking into this and making sure that everything is, is protected continuously. So that's definitely a, a, a very big challenge because as you may know, um, cybersecurity savvy resources are scarce and uh, you have to invest in, in, in having them and, and of course retaining them. From the life cycle perspective of the, of the device and the user as well, uh, there are some that are covered in the, in the um, requirements of the, of the security specifications and the regulators, but um, of course we can always go one step beyond. So um, what we try to show with this, with this wheel is basically that, um, of course, you have to protect um, the, the assets, you have to protect the mobile application, but nothing wrong is happening. You have to make sure that it's secure today when you issue the application and you install on the user uh, phone, but then you have to be able as well to detect um, that something is, is going wrong. So you install today the application in a device that uh, is not rooted, but then, um, Two weeks down the road, the device is rooted. So you you would be willing to have an, a, a way to be alerted that this is happening, and not only that, but even react to that fact uh, that that uh, something is is going wrong or something fishy is happening. So you can uh, moderate the the service level based based on that. And of course, the holy grail is is even reaching the level of prediction. So basically, even before something wrong happens that you are able to, to see that uh, that's, that's the case. To end with uh, these three dimensions, the, the last one is, is about the reach. Uh, so how we cover as many users as possible. And I like especially this, this picture because uh, even though it's a bit old, shows very clearly that in the Android space, the, the number of brands of uh, phone models out there is um, staggering. So it's really, really complex to, to manage. And uh, you can imagine that not only you have to make that your soft pose application or your application is running right uh, perfectly on all these devices, you have to make sure that the application is secure in all these devices. And that's a completely different approach than the usual uh, release testing that you would have for a mobile application. Yes, to make sure that it runs on, on every device. And then of course you can think that one way to overcome that is to limit, um, let's say to the last two years, um, uh, OS versions, uh, Android OS versions, the, the, the installability and, and the, the enablement of the, um, of the mobile application. But if, if you look at this example, for instance, from 2020, if you would do that and only restrict um, your application to run on phones that are two years old, that would only give you 40% of the, of the reach on, on Android devices out there. And that's a global figure. So you can imagine that as uh, Gopal introduced it earlier in a place like Southeast Asia or um, Asia in general, where you have even more diversity of devices and stuff that could become even more challenging. So yes, uh, as a summary, uh, three takeaways uh, to, 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 to keep clear what, what we are talking about. First one is uh, time is, is literally money. So all these things that we are talking about, all these challenges take time to implement and to maintain. So, and as you know, when, when you want to meet all the uh, requirements from the regulators, you have to go through a security analysis, you have to get a first certification, and that's an iterative project uh, uh, process. So if something is wrong is, fo is found, then you have to go back to development, then you submit again. And uh, every, every day that you are not launching your application, you're basically launch, uh, losing the, the money that you would be uh, making from, from, from the service being available. Second one is uh, security is an arms race. So 
something that is secure today will not be secure in six months. Uh, so you have to continuously invest resources on that. And uh, to end with is the complexity that comes with the, with the uh, reach. So the more users, the scalability of your solution will depend a lot on how secure you can make the, um, the, the solution on the devices that are not the latest ones or the, or the, or the let's say top tier of the devices. So yes, if, if uh, some self-promotion uh, to, to end with from my side, of course, if you face these, these challenges, it's better not to, to do it alone. So from, from our side, from Bill 38, uh, as we've done with, with our partners here, uh, happy to, to cooperate and, and help you in this, in this journey. So well, back to you, thank you. Thanks, uh, Pedro, for giving the insights on the security aspects. Definitely cannot be ignored. So um, moving on to the next part uh, of the conversation, I think we are uh, doing good on time. So I mean, so far uh, uh, you have heard uh, what are the key success or considerations required for soft force uh, business. We, we heard about the security challenges. Now I would like to request Mr. Uh, Angus, uh, if someone wants to go on an implementation of a soft force solution, what are some of the uh, hurdles they need to be aware and how you can uh, uh, mitigate some of the, this uh, Angus, can you share your insights and thoughts there? Yes, thanks. Uh, thanks, Gober and thanks, Jason and uh, Petro for the presentation. So in this session, I, um, I, I will try to talk about the challenges and also how to get over the hurdles in a uh, software implementation. Okay, so I think before talking about um, all the challenges, I, I try to understand actually why we lead support. Actually, support is aligning the development of the payment ecosystem. I believe uh, most of you attending the webinar actually are coming from the payment uh, industry. In the last like five years or even 10 years, we have been seeing the changes in the payment ecosystem. We want everything now cashless. I believe all of you right now are not using any cash anymore. Uh, contactless payment transaction, we, uh, we don't want to touch anything. And also in this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation, and then everyone is now trying to rely more on a mobile phone, higher mobility because of a lifestyle. And I believe uh, a lot of people may be using their mobile phone to attend the webinar today as well. And this is the reason why uh, we there are a lot of a payment application for the finance, banking, post, because in the payment ecosystem, in the post system, we are trying to move from the hardware solution to software solution. We don't want any extra hardware anymore. And because of this, as Petro mentioned, payment security, cyber security is the main concern uh, as of today. And all these five factors are actually the driving force that the implementation um, for the uh, software solutions and software systems, okay? Um, before talking about the challenges, I here I just provide you, you a very high level uh, uh, overview. I mean, because uh, software is actually in demand, uh, that's why the CAS team working together with PCI uh, to, to introduce a, a, a program for support because CPOC, CPOC. Uh, here you can see the high level functional model of a CPOC solutions. So there are four components. Two components are there already. Like the first one is the consumer device, which is actually your payment card, your contact card, or your mobile phone for Apple Pay, Google Pay. It is there already. Another is the transition of routing system. That is a typically payment gateway acquirer like, got nothing to change to use it with SOPOS. And then for the SOPOS, the new, the newly introduced component is the way I highlight in wet is the cost. Cost is a commercially off the self device. It basically is an Android device with an NFC enabled function and then one thing and a CPO application running on it. And the CPO application is like a payment application, payment post application with the, all the security protection may be uh, roughly mentioned by uh, Petro previously. And also there's an extra component is a backend uh, system. It's also defined by PCI that you need to have the attestation and monitoring server. So you can see there are all two key components that you will need to develop uh, to deploy a support uh, uh, solutions. So let's go talk about the challenges. In terms of the challenges of a, um, a, a SOPOF uh, implementation, typically I can define the uh, uh, three areas. The first is about the technology challenges. I think you heard from Petro a lot about the security. You heard about a lot from, uh, from Jason, uh, how to come up with uh, everything bundled together. So here 
you can see a very high level board diagram for what a cost platform should have. Um, you can see there's a lot of uh, a jargon, a lot of uh, uh, elements, components, talking about the security, you have the software protection, key management, context kernel. Typically, to understand a, uh, or to develop a software, you need to understand technologies in three areas. First of all, for the context kernel, how can you develop a secure and modular context kernel and application for your existing uh, software application and the future application? All this, you need to understand the functional requirements, security requirement. You understand security requirement, then you need to protect this one. How to protect this? You need to have up-to-date internet protection, uh, like crypt crypt cryptography, uh, crypto encryption key, authentication, authentication that you need to you need to have in your in app in your device application, software application. What I mean is, and also as request by PCI, you need to have real-time security. Uh, uh, monitoring, which is attestation and monitoring servers. So actually all these uh, technologies, you have to understand the requirement, you have to understand from the functional requirement, uh, security requirement, then to, to develop your software solutions. Um, let's say you, you understand all the technologies already, now you move to the next step is the implementation. Then implementation bring along, bring along with you and the challenges. Development, uh, you, you know the technologies, you know the requirement. How can you develop and integrate all the all, all the technologies together uh, to come with a solution combining with the functional and the security requirement? That is the challenges you have to tackle. Another one is okay, there is a, a security requirement. How to track the balance between the performance and the security function? How to find the right security combination for your software solutions is also another challenge for you. You develop yourself, how to develop, you buy or whatever. That is another security uh, competition challenge you have to tackle. And then finally, the quality software in the front end and the back end have a good performance up to the standard uh, 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 software solutions. So all these the challenges you have to take take care and tackle during the development phases to launch a, 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 a very good software solutions. And then the other challenge before you launch a product that is about certification. Um, maybe a lot of, lot of you have uh, experience in certification. So as I mentioned before, uh, right now software is governed by uh, PCI. So you need to go through the PCI support US certification to have your uh, software, uh, software launch to the market. So in certification, after you develop a product, you have to understand what are the requirements, what are the duration requirements, what are the certificate requirements, how to deal with the laboratories, what are the materials they're looking at, uh, such as uh, solution maintenance, it covers about the, uh, the procedure, human maintenance, everything. And uh, on top of security, also there's uh, some other uh, uh, certification like uh, uh, contactless level two with our MasterCard. So all these certification also and this is something outside of development. Maybe, and, and you have to think about uh, how to get your product certified. So this is challenge you have to think about uh, uh, during the implementation. So let's say you have the technology, uh, you understand already, let's say you implement already, you get certification already, and the next challenge is the operations. Um, I mean, on the ongoing challenge, ongoing operation, because right now maybe you start your support, support like different uh, scheme like Visa, MasterCard, but later on you want to add more card scheme. So how to add more card scheme, more context kernel, there is a challenges and the cyber security keep changing every day, the attack. There may be some vulnerability found uh, from day to day or whatever periodically. How can you do the patching for the vulnerabilities? And the white spot crypto security function update, how to keep up to date to the relevant technologies in terms of the payment, in terms of security. There is also a constant challenges that you have to face yeah, during the operation. Of course, there's some uh, challenges related to maintenance, like uh, uh, particularly like something like uh, how to maintain a secure key, uh, uh, encryption key update, device listing, add the device, uh, remove the device, fit the license management, and maintain certification. Let's say you want to add some functions, add some features uh, to the existing software solution. How can you do the uh, certification? Do you need to do the uh, PCI again, or to, to do the Delta again, or whatever, whatever. So all these are challenges you have to think, think about during the operation, okay? So with all these uh, uh, challenges, um, I will go and talk about some uh, um, methodology or the approach people are trying to uh, tackle the challenges. 
um, in typically um, people will be thinking of a two way to tackle the challenge or to, to support the uh, implementation of the SOPOS. I, uh, I, I call it like a, a, a build and buy, a build or buy solution. For build is in-house, um, you can, uh, in-house is very straightforward that you deploy your internal resources. Uh, you build your own team to develop the software solution from scratch. Uh, you learn all the, all the standard, I mean, the benefits for the, for the in-house um, uh, soft implementation that of course you own your own IP. You have full control of the business model and also full control of the product roadmap. You know uh, what we need to do next. But there are some considerations you have to think about because you need to learn the technologies in the payment functional, EMB, PCI, and then security that you take longer time to the market. And then you, your existing uh, team, development team or R&D team may not be good for the uh, support. You may need to invest the heavy uh, uh, team on R&D and technologies with some consideration and the ongoing support, maintenance support, technology update, this thing about. And of course, the full certification because you're doing everything from yourself that you need to think about uh, go through all the like PCI, EMV level two uh, scheme certification. And it, all this can lead to business risk. Uh, support is something new, but promising. But uh, if you want to do something from, 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 uh, from the beginning by yourself, that the investment, the initial investment could be huge. Another opposed extreme is uh, I call it buy, like a full solution acquisition. It means you just buy like a, uh, a, a off the shelf uh, a certified software solution. You just uh, like two simple integration, just say use the software solution from, from others, uh, become your solutions. The benefits office is quick time to market, uh, short uh, term low, low business risk because you don't need to invest anything. And uh, certification, you just rely on the certificate they have. But the consideration for this uh, uh, full source acquisition or buy solution is you need to 100% rely on your provider. You cannot control your roadmap. You cannot control what they're going to do. The scalability, sustainability, expandability you have to think about. And you may need to share some business information to them because uh, in a full certified uh, CPOS solutions, um, payment gateway could be into scope. It means that there may be something uh, uh, sitting in between you and your customers, that means you need to share some information to them. Maybe some are sensitive. That could need to a, uh, a midterm uh, high business week. So this is uh, something too extreme case between a buy and build in-house and full uh, solution acquisition. And here actually mindset is introducing something in between. Uh, it's a white label SDK solution. It's something between buy and build. The benefits of the white label uh, uh, solution is you can make use of P-certified or p evader components in, in, in the SDK to develop your own support solutions. So what you can do is you just focus on your own business model, business logic, and the high flexibility in-house development because you just deploy your existing team to, to, to make use of SDK provided provide by the white label solutions to do the API. So you can also capture the market quickly, fast deployment because they just provide the API and just use the API to your development. It's a faster ROI and music uh, 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 scale your cost to the revenue. And the one benefit that is that you still keep your own brand, means the solution is leader at your own solutions as you develop everything by yourself. And for consideration of course, this one is you need to collaborate with a trust, trusted technology partner. Uh, they have a clear roadmap, what are going to do next, what are the uh, payment kernels they're going to add, um, and in terms of technology, what kind of function they're going to support that you have to think about. And you still need to go because it's still listed at your solutions. Uh, there's some lightweight certification process like PCI. The reason I call it lightweight is because uh, the SDK components, the white label components, the components and functional or security, they are P-certified, evaluated. So the lab, or can we use some result for your own certification? So it can help you faster to the market. So this, the third way is something between buy and build. It's a white label solution may be good for your consideration to develop your own solutions. Um, here, just uh, some uh, use case from the, from the customers, from some partners. Uh, by using the SDK, you can see the results shortly just in five days. So what you need to do is just to download the SDK, 
to get access the API document, we provide you some sample source code. Then you can quickly do the integration seamlessly with the existing key, uh, uh, UI and also coexisting with some other payment method. You can provide a first version demonstration to your customer already. And then after uh, the customer behavior demo, then you won't have a really committed to develop your source code, make it roll out. Typically, six months, you can have every ready because you are leveraging the SDK uh, 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 functional security requirement. You don't care about this one. You just focus on your business logic development, level three application development, and you just leverage your servicing, uh, uh, servicing kit a mindset. We use the result. And this it can help you reduce your planning and investment risk because you have key roadmap to certification when you go for certification where you can launch, pay as you grow. Um, and of course, we support the future uh, uh, payment kernel update and the territory update. So this is the typical use case uh, for rollout like take around six months that you can launch your, your solution already by, um, by web label solution. So how can we achieve? Because mindset is a, we consider mindset is a business enabler. We enable our customer to develop their software solution to create quicker revenue and profits by their accepting solution via support. Uh, how can we achieve with, with mindset web label support solution? You can develop support still under your own brand. You just control your business logic after the setup pace as you grow. And then you can just integrate in weeks. We provide a high performance uh, uh, security and possession SDK attention server and the solution that actually ready for the PCI certification. So this is something we bring the values to the to to the uh, uh, software solution provider who want to launch their own uh, solutions. Here we just uh, provide a very high level uh, broad diagram of a MySec white label solution. You can see how can we achieve that. So from the front end side, our SDK called MyHadis that come with the payment kernel like Visa, Mastercard, and with the security function that requested by the uh, IP side already. So that's why we just support ready SDK engine. We have a EMV, security API, key measure API, binding, security protection, and we provide the API for the customer to develop the support application. Support application, we 100% uh, aligning with the business logic. And from the backend side with the MySuite, MySuite is the backend uh, uh, testing server. It already complied with the PCI DSS uh, uh, requirement with HSM monitoring and also the API for your, uh, for your implementation. So you can see that in this uh, model, uh, we don't really touch your transaction data. It means your business is still your business. We don't, we don't really touch your transaction. We don't touch your customer information. And this is the build of a white label solution instead of a, a, a full solution acquisition. So in summary, MySec can help you your support development in four areas. Integrate off the cell SDK, API, then Google. You can integrate in the weeks. Monitoring, we have real-time monitoring check uh, uh, with the backend server, everything, uh, to monitoring the, the, the software solutions. Hardening, we provide the security protection up to the industry uh, requirement for the uh, software protection. And of course, the management, life cycle management, by bad listing, encryption key, and Roman something like that. So, this is um, what I want to share about the uh, implementation challenges and how to handle by the white label solution. Okay, thanks, Koba. Uh, thanks, uh, Angus, uh, for sharing the insights on how do we approach some of the implementation challenges of a soft pause. So before I move on to some of the questions to other uh, uh, panel members, maybe one question I see keep coming, uh, which is mostly related on the pin. So maybe you can uh, give us some insights, like uh, is there any standard for soft pause solution with pin entry? And oh, how do you okay. work with, uh, how do you work in any offline pin regions? Um, okay. Response for that? That is, a, that is a very good question. So you can see from my presentation, right now uh, PCI launched the, the software solution is uh, without pin entry. So for, for every uh, software solution without pin entry, you can just go for the PCI certification and all the car scheme will recognize. But there is demand like some region or some use case, they will need the pin entry. So for the software, pin entry is the optional configuration. 
But for pin entry right now, it's still under different part of scheme for different uh, uh, card scheme. Let's say Visa, they have the tap, tap to phone uh, plus pin program. Uh, a MasterCard also have that one as well. So if the solution want to support it, they will need to talk to the scheme separately to join the program as a pilot that is uh, to support PIN for the support. Having said that, actually PCI is actually in the process uh, upgrading uh, the, the CPOC solutions or upgrading the CPOC standard to support PIN. So PCI have the roadmap already soon, sooner or later, maybe soon, soon as this by end of this year or early next year, uh, the program will be upgraded to support PIN as well. So at that time, there will be C port. Uh, I don't know what exactly the name is. At that time, there was the PCI uh, C port plus PIN program governed by the PCI. It means a support can also submit the PIN entry already. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Angus. Maybe I move to uh, Mr. Pedro. I think this question is quite relevant to you. So there was a question which talked about, have you used a white box or TE for security? What are some of the challenges you face with uh, key management? In fact, personally, key management is something which I'm really scared of. Maybe you can uh, share some insights on how do you uh, manage these challenges with key management, please. Thank you. That's that's definitely a, a very good question, and especially that's that's the um, the, the challenge when you are uh, trying to make your your application, your your software app, to run on as many devices as possible because some of them will have some of these um, hardware security measures like TE or even um, secure element based um, um, stronghold. Uh, this this type of of capabilities, but some others may not have them, and. Uh, one of the ways that, that uh, we enable this, this possibility is through managing this underlying um, uh, complexity uh, to make the life of the developer and the, and the operator of the, of the application easier. So we, we particularly in our case, uh, uh, we have the, the feature that we call Silicon Vault that basically decides uh, once you install the application on the device, decides which is the, the highest security mechanism to, to store the the keys and, and to match all the sensitive data. And uh, based on, on, on this um, decision, it stores it in the, in the most secure area. And we go back to these uh, three uh, strategies to protect. So the moment that you have a higher uh, protection, uh, then you can relax a little bit the renewability. So you don't have to renew the keys uh, as frequently if you have a more strong area to, to store the keys. While if you have a, a less secure area, like for instance, white box, as, as you mentioned, uh, probably you, you would have a strategy that you are increasing the renewability. So um, the expiry dates of the certificates are shorter and the, the, the keys have to be um, um, renewed more frequently. So that's precisely all this complexity that comes with the, with the key management that you are mentioning that, that you're scared because it's, it's very critical and it's essential that is um, addressed in, in, the, in the right way because if not, um, the possibilities of compromise uh, can, be, can be very high. Okay. okay, thanks. I think there is a follow-up, I think it could be relevant to you as well. There is a question which asks about how much of a limitation is uh, SoftPost being Android only to your business? Will this hinder growth? Or do we need to support devices uh, that are supported by Google 8.1 and above? Uh, any insights there, Pedro? I mean, from, from my side, uh, just, just to mention that uh, in principle, from, from the security standpoint, uh, you, you have no limitation on supporting iOS or Android, but then you have the, the constraints with regards to the NFC interface. So um, as I said, even though from the security standpoint, there shouldn't be an issue, I think it's more um, an issue on the, on the capabilities for the, the contactless reading of the of the um, uh, device, the contactless card or the contactless um, uh, OEM pay. I don't know, Angus, is you, if you have um, uh, any insights on, on that one, which, yes, which yes. is the impact from yes, the business Yes, I think for, for, for this one, I, I, I can add a bit. So right now, actually, uh, you're right. Actually, for the PCI requirement support, it's actually um, for Android only. It's not supporting the uh, iOS because the uh, iOS, the NFC device, is not open for the for the dating within device. So right now it's only for the Android device for the support. And regarding the and regarding the version, uh, typically it has to be uh, version eight or above for the Android. Okay. okay. Thanks uh, uh, both of you. Like um, 
one of our uh, panelists uh, has to drop off because of some technical issues. So all the questions with respect to Jason, we will take with him offline. Then we will try to uh, circulate uh, the responses. Uh, I think uh, Angus, there, there could be another question which uh, you might uh, give your views. So there was a question which talk of uh, what what is the future of uh, CPOC and uh, SPOC? Will either win out in the end or just coexist for a very long time? So any views there, Angus? You mean the SPOC and and which one and SPOC? Yeah. SPOC is the SPOC, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. So actually, SPOC. Um. Again, I may be 100% correct. So SPOC is, you can consider it's the first version of uh, SOPOS, but actually it's only purely for the uh, a pin entry only. So it means you still need to use a contactless reader. The contactless reader will come with the contactless uh, payment kernel and you just use the, um, the, the, the mobile phone as a pin entry device, okay? So this is the first version of SOPOS, but not exactly, to me, it's not exactly so post because you still need to use the impulse. Um, as I mentioned, if for some uh, application, if you really want to make use of a mobile phone uh, for the pin entry, uh, right now, PSAT has no such program. So it means you may still need to go for SBOC, uh, uh, working together with the impulse and also with your mobile phone for the pin entry function. But as I mentioned just now, and some uh, 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 customer ask, in the future, uh, the support will be upgraded to support pin as well. So at that time, a single mobile phone can perform the card reading function, transaction function, and also the software pin entry already. So at that time, um, I could say, I cannot say 100% can be placed, but I could say, the use case of the C4 plus P could be much wider than the uh, SBOC application. This is what I see. And um, and this is the also the, let I me mean, talk about the history of mindset. We, we, we mindset also aware this SBOC solutions, but from our, uh, 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 we believe C4, uh, CPOC could be the future with PIN. So that's why we, we go directly to the uh, uh, purely software solutions instead of uh, working with dongle and also just use the device as a PDA tree. This is the what, what, what I see the business, what I see the, the trend, okay? Thanks, I think uh, as per my watch, we have uh, one last minute left. So um, maybe Angus, you can quickly answer. There was a question which talked about if the acquirer bank third party wants to implement soft cost solution backend module at their uh, data center, is there any requirement for their installation environment? So. You, so you can answer this very quick. Uh, if it's a lengthy answer, maybe you can answer uh, the person offline. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, uh, typically they got nothing. If, if talking about the acquirers, uh, that actually for them to support the support, typically there's there's nothing change, as what they're doing right now. Okay, of course, uh, the support uh, provider will need to integrate with their uh, backend system, but typically uh, there's nothing. There's not much. There, there's not much change. For what they're doing with the with the post right now, so it's easier for the acquire to adopt the soft post. But of course, uh, there's some process will will we remain there. Let's say, uh, level three certification something like that will be remain uh, there. But in terms of uh, upgrade of system development, actually there's nothing uh, much that the acquire need to do. I see. So thanks for that. I think uh, we are almost there. Maybe on a concluding note, maybe Pedro, I'll give the last chance. Um, any uh, conclusion note on the future you see for soft post uh, solutions in the region? Less than one minute time you have. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's um, in such a dynamic region as, as Asia, particularly, it's um, going to enable the, the acceptance of contactless payments even in more places. And that's basic for the scalability of the, of the accept, acceptance and the uh, acquiring business. So I'm pretty sure that there is a very successful and, and um, a big potential for, for all these in, in the future. And working with, with uh, partners like, like Mansec and, and Group 38 is um, making it easy to, to go faster and uh, with a best return of investment into, into this market. I, okay, thanks. So I wish uh, all the best uh, for all three of you.
and uh, thanks the audience for the good questions that are coming up. We will try to, I mean, apologize if we couldn't manage to answer all the questions, but we will uh, uh, try to provide uh, offline. Uh, but um, uh, thanks uh, once again, all the panelists for giving your views. And then we will be sharing uh, some of the uh, slides I mean, after doing some quick sanitation. Uh, thanks and have a, a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.